This is Racing Across America with Seth Merrow. Welcome back to Racing Across America. Joined now by Tony Kahlo from the Finger Lakes. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, Seth. Happy to have you on board and uh, talk a little Finger Lakes, but also this week we're getting some thoughts on uh, Breeders' Cup from folks. And I'm just curious, I'm assuming, uh, because it seems like uh, every venue around the country does well, expecting a big day uh, Friday and Saturday out of Finger Lakes? Yeah, we sure hope so, no question about it. Uh, for all of our fans that are locally based, uh, tuning in this morning, we are going to be starting a little earlier on Saturday. Uh, we'll open up our racing doors at 11 a.m., and I believe our first post is scheduled for 12 noon. Uh, Friday will stay status quo with a 12.35 first post. And also, it should be noted, starting next week, we will be racing uh, Monday through Friday, and we'll have a 12.15 post, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's when we do that, starting next week. Yeah, that, that makes sense, uh, and we'll double-check as we get closer and mention that on the handicappers report and whatnot. But, of course, Daylight Savings uh, winds up this week, so that makes sense that, that things will move up a little bit for uh, the remainder of the season. Tony, you folks are going to play uh, Finger Lakes this afternoon. What's the weather look like? It's like a pretty good day. The weather forecast is uh, favorable. I think it's supposed to be pretty warm, unseasonably warm, uh, mid-70s, and I guess we might as well enjoy it because I'm taking a look at what's <laughs> What's coming this weekend, and I don't like what I'm seeing. Yeah. I've seen 30 for this weekend and possible flakes. You've got to be kidding me. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm right with you. you. You took the words right out of my mouth. Come on, man. This is way too early. The guy said it on the weather last night. He said, you know, it's not, and I like the way he worded it, it's not a 0% chance that we'll have snow this weekend. I kind of liked the, the, the he, he was, he seemed to be backing into it, but uh, I did not like what the weatherman said last night about the weekend myself. But given that, we'll be able to watch uh, with envy the folks out in Southern California, because I think the weather's going to be nice there. So at least we got to have that going for us. But with the nice weather this afternoon, let's hope we can make some, uh, some good predictions for uh, Finger Lakes Racing today, and we'll take a look first up at uh, race number two, a uh, conditional claimer at the five level, a calendar condition claimer, and in uh, the second race today, I thought Lafreque was kind of interesting, seven to two on the morning line, and I just think this horse might fit well at this condition and level. This horse is on a little bit of a good race, bad race pattern. If that keeps up, Plus a little wake up maybe with the additional class relief. Uh, the freak was interesting to me. Cajun beat uh, moves up a condition, but off the last race has to be considered. And then at 15 to one, Desert Don Juan I found interesting as well. I went back and looked at last at that last race. And I think the trouble line is absolutely true. The stumble at the start is something that I think you can take into consideration. So I, I went two, four, three in the second. How did you see it? Yeah, you know, your Lafrique has, has a lot of good uh, angles there, like the every other race pattern, and the class drop is uh, is the key. That is a, is a strong move. So he's definitely a player. I, I've gone with number four, Cajun Best, as my top selection. And by the way, I want to throw the disclaimer out because it seems like a week or two weeks ago I was telling fans to uh, watch for horses and, and give them a race or two through conditions. Ever since I said that, horses are just going through their conditions. <laughs> I wonder if that's a time of the year thing, maybe later in the year where they have more conditioning. Maybe it makes it easier to do it. Because I'm with you. I say it on the, and I said it this morning. I said typically when horses go through a condition, I like to see a race or two just for them to get an education at the next condition. But I'm with you. I've noticed recently that horses have woken up and then blow right through the next condition pretty quickly. I saw for, I mean, I've been here since 08, so this is the start of my seventh season. So the first six seasons I saw this trend. This pattern happened all the time, and, and then I speak up, and I don't know. I guess the racing gods just don't like me. We, we, we have know a... this guy. Who's this guy think he is coming into New York telling us what we need to be looking for? We're going to show this guy. And that, that's so, what makes the game so exciting. The racing gods, just when so. you think you have it figured out, they jump back in and then uh, turn it back on you. Yeah, I, I don't get it. So anyway... Uh, Cajun, that's my uh, top selection. I don't really like the interior fractions of his most recent race, but you know, I'm not going to hold that against him. I know once upon a time, Charlie Baker thought, of, thought something of this horse. He, he, he had won an N3L allowance condition. Um, I'm pretty sure he, he had him in, a, in, in some pretty good races before that. Then he uh, tried to stay bread. And, you know, he's had some, 
that's a little bit of fast class, and he was able to win recently, beating Swinging at Zeros and Straight Thunder. You know, that's not the, that's not the greatest group. Uh, Lafrique definitely ran against much better recently, Park City and Marsh Dog, but I like those two. Uh, that, that's what I would say. I think Bad Boy Bubby's worth a little look. Seems like he woke up last time, and now he's back in for five. He's kind of a little sneaky, sneaky look, and... What about Prop's estimator, the ten-year-old making his 100th career start today? What a what a milestone for him! Yeah, you, you always gotta like those uh, lunch pail horses, the the old timers who come out and just keep popping out and then running well. All right, let's uh, shift our attention out to the allowance event in the third race. Uh, in the third, I went seven, the one entry and two, Abby's Butterfly on top, just off the recent numbers. Uh, and again, this is one of those horses that won last time and maybe can string a couple together. I thought both halves of the one entry on a best effort would be uh, eligible to be right up in the hunt. And then Mary Ann's kitten, Kitchen. Uh, the last effort, the buyer figure went in the wrong direction. You just never know. Does that signal the horse is now, you know, moving downwards on the form cycle? I'm going to look at that last one as maybe a little bit of an aberration, and Mary Ann's Kitchen will bounce back to some efforts we saw just prior, and those are good enough to get up in the mix. So I went seven, the one entry, and two. You know what, Seth? I'm kind of on the same page here with you. I, I anticipate Lexi on the cover probably being on the lead. Uh, you know, she's had her problems trying to steal the deal, and I think she'll run on and stay nicely for a, for a piece, but hard to fault Abby's butterfly. She seems to uh, throw off the race in Saratoga, and you got to go all the way back to her first effort this year when she didn't hit the board. I mean, she did hit the board, but she ran fourth. Uh, she's pretty consistent. She's got enough tactical speed to, to stay close enough, and I think she's the sharpest one in the race. And you know, she ran against always in stilettos two back. That, that gal's pretty good. Give Abby's butterfly the big look. Here in race three. Uh, speaking of milestones, we've got a couple of our jockeys and trainers that are on the verge of milestones. Daniel Vergara, who I think is one of our better jockeys here, that kind of just flies under the radar. He is two away from 1,000. And then the godfather, Michael S. Ferraro, what a milestone he's approaching. He is five trading victories away from the magical number of 3,000. Oh, nice. And he's a guy that folks follow a finger like, so they got to be very familiar with him, obviously. So that is, that is a milestone for a trainer. So we'll keep our eyes on that as we move forward over the next couple of weeks. Sixth race at Finger Lakes this afternoon. Optional claimer starter allowance. Claiming tags at the 10 level. Starter allowance level at 5,000. I took a look at the uh, number five in here. Went master of the obvious with two and 20 at eight to five on the morning line. It is Michael Ferraro and uh, comes off a couple of nice races since coming back from uh, Presque Isle Downs. So I couldn't get past two and 20. But big shot in the news, I think, is going to be a little bit interesting in here off of the uh, nice improving efforts over the past couple of starts. And then future Razo, I just wasn't quite sure. I think the return to Finger Lakes will probably bounce this horse back to, to a better effort. Threw in a dud last time at Belmont. But again, return to Finger Lakes, I think we should get back to some better numbers. So future Razo was interesting as well. So in the sixth for me, five, two, and three. Yeah, I'm on 2-20. and 20. Uh, Always liked this horse. I don't know what really happened to back. He didn't run one of his better races. It's not a, not, not, not a disgraceful effort, but it, it wasn't up to what he, he can do. He's, a, he's my top pick. Uh, future also should be noted that Brian McCall is the Mac wheel back. He is the king of the wheel back. Last time out, the horse had a month off. That doesn't really fit Brian's M.O. And this is much more what he likes to do when he wheels back horses. He's very dangerous. So there's a... There's good possibilities with him. I think Eyewitness is kind of sneaky. Becky Babcock doesn't have a lot of horses. This is by far her best horse. And on his best race, he is good enough. I don't know what happened last time. He kind of went in the wrong direction. Fort Conway, I believe, was a sprinter on the stretch out. And perhaps that uh, that hindered Eyewitness being a little closer. He was close, but he just couldn't sustain it. And um, I know some of his better races, he's, he's worth a little look for a minor place in here. But 2-20 in future also, they look like the two to me. All right, sounds good. And uh, as noted, we're going to take uh, some opinions from folks during the week on some Breeders' Cup events. And uh, uh, Tony, you and I were talking during the break, and one race that, that you thought you wanted to touch on, I'm going to be intrigued to see where you go. I was on the uh, Breeders' Cup, uh, uh, yeah, the Breeders' Cup panel uh, at the National Museum of Racing on Saturday, and this was one of my assigned races that day, the Turf Sprint. 
Uh, and I thought Kagan was kind of interesting in here. I'm not shy with that funny coming down the downhill. I have to, to reassess things maybe a little bit. Uh, and and uh, actually, I'm looking here, Kagan, I maybe, maybe chose the other uh, event because I'm not seeing odds for him. So I may have to really reassess. But uh, I think it's a very, very intriguing race like most of the races on the card. Tight end touchdown is a bona fide turf sprinter and in turf sprints, I like that. Renee's got zip. Uh, very interesting. March Man, Bobby's Kitten. No, nay, never for a Wesley Ward with Frankie DeTore on board. Interesting. Undrafted for Wes Welker, also trained by Wesley Ward. Dimension is interesting. And the uh, European runner who came over here to win up at Woodbine last time out, Casper Netsker, is uh, intriguing as well. What are your thoughts in the turf sprint? Well, you know, um I've been on a horse all year that's in this race, and, and I'm going to stay with him. He's my boy, number 11 undrafted. I loved him today when he ran on the Belmont undercard. I touted him to a bunch of my buddies, and they got a lot more richer than me because they're, <laughs> they're crazier than me. I got one of my buddies, you know, oh, who do you like? So I tell him, and he's got to make sure that he, he, he doubles up or triples up what I play so he can, so he can do that. <laughs> Put his chest out, get a little puffy, but that's all good. I'm not, I don't bet as much as I used to back in my younger days. And he's in his early 30s, so he's kind of where I was uh, 15 years ago. But <laughs> undrafted by horse. He went to Europe, ran very well in defeat, came back and ran at Kentucky Downs. And, you know, he didn't have the smoothest of trips. I remember watching it, and he was kind of um, forced to go between runners, and he needed that race. He's only had two races since the Belmont, if I'm, if I'm correct. And he's my horse. I guess the only thing that i got to worry about is how he will handle the configuration. Sometimes horses over that track, you know, you might need a race or two. I'm willing to take that gamble because I think this horse is going to be packing a huge bunch in the lane. So he's my top pick. Uh, Renee's got this pretty interesting. Third two years ago, second last year, both in his direction. No misdirection today. Looks like she's kind of getting the worst of it with the draw. On an outside post coming down the hill, but she does have plenty of speed. Maybe she'll be able to clear away. Also, another one to think about. A little sneaky long shot I got for you. Home Run Kitten. This is a horse that's been running in Southern California. I believe he's only a three-year-old, but he um, he packs quite a punch. He could come rolling late. A horse that uh, that's very familiar with uh, with Southern Cal racing. So I'm drafted by top pick, and if he runs big, then I. Uh, I'll be pretty happy. Yeah, and Home Run Kitten, interesting, having run well over the course in the previous start. And as you say, that is a quirky little, the downhill course with the one turn one way and then another turn the other way. Very intriguing. And Tony, before we let you go, getting opinions from everybody on the Classic as well. And Tony, while we talk about this, uh, for the last couple of days, I've been showing races from some of the horses in the Classic just to give folks some thoughts on some of these horses. And we're going to go back here while we talk and look at the... Uh, the West Virginia Derby on uh, August 2nd. The winner here will be number five, Tapature, but a close-up second, number nine, Candy Boy. Candy Boy, to me, is maybe interesting on the, uh, the pace scenario. Um, and uh, I'm just looking here. Uh, Candy Boy is in the 12 hole coming up on Saturday, 20 to 1. And again, on the pace scenario, maybe a stalker that can make a little bit of a late move. The question mark on Candy Boy for me is the distance. But again, we'll watch the stretch run of the August uh, West Virginia Derby, a close-up second for number nine Candy Boy. And again, I'm just showing some various uh, races during the week. I don't know whether you're into Candy Boy or not. I'll ask you uh, which direction you are going to go in. And again, we're not pinning anybody down here on Tuesday, but what are your thoughts on the Classic? Well, as far as Candy Boy, you know, I've always been battling my weight since I was a little kid, so I'm kind of like <laughs> the Candy Boy. Um, I kind of like him. I watched CBG Works for the last couple days, and he worked really good. I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, but he worked seven furlongs in 145. That's a legitimate racehorse workout. I love seven furlong workouts. He looked pretty good doing it. He's a sleeper. You know, he's under the radar because he hasn't won since February. Uh, it's Kentucky Derby Day race. That was a that's a toss. I think the mile and a quarter should fit him. He likes the track. He gave shared belief by a heck of a run in the uh, cash call futurity last year. A lot of people might not remember it. Gary Stevens made a very very aggressive middle move with him, and he really forced the hand of shared belief. Tested him all the way from the back stretch to about the eighth pole, and shared belief finally was able to shake clear and show everybody what he's all about. Andy Boy had the misfortune of running up against him at Los Alamitos, so. 
He's familiar with the big horse as far as shared belief, the morning line favorite. And it's 20 to 1. I think he's very intriguing. I think you're on to something. And I, I would definitely uh, I would definitely consider him. I would definitely use him in some of the uh, exotics. Very good. Any, anybody else that, that you're leaning towards in the race as far as uh, shared belief, uh, Bay Aaron, California Chrome, the three-year-olds, Tonalist, the three-year-olds will be taking some action. What are your thoughts there? Well, you know, I've, I've been on Tonalist for a while as far as uh, I really loved his jockey club gold cup. Um, he had a good maintenance move the other day at Belmont. I heard some of the guys on TVG, Simon Bray, Tom Amos, talking about how he's a, you know, he's such a big horse. And his best races have been at Belmont with those big sweeping turns. How he will handle the tight Santa Anita turns is uh, that remains to be seen. But if he, if he does take a liking to the surface, he, he he's been very intriguing in my opinion. Um, and I don't like the fact that he doesn't have a work over the track. I'm I'm really big on that angle. But um, and he's only five to one, so he's not offering me as much value as I wanted. But um, those are kind of the two that I'm looking at right now. I got to get into it a little bit more, but. You know, and you'll share belief in California Chrome. They're going to buy her, and they're probably going to attract most of the attention. But, you know, Candy Boy, I think he's kind of an intriguing long shot. So we got to get a little bit more into it. I think it's kind of a tough race. Yeah, I think the whole weekend is, is tough and is going to offer potentially some value. It should be a lot of fun. Tony, as always, we appreciate the visit. Good luck this afternoon at Finger Lakes, and good luck to everybody out there on the weekend as well. Because, again, I think a lot, a lot of the venues around the country will have full houses with a uh, couple of good cards on Friday and Saturday for the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, yeah, Tony, Tony, thanks again. We'll talk to you next week.